disabuse yourself of the notion that you know what is best for this person. You don't, not only do you not know, you actually don't want that responsibility for two reasons. Let's say they do what you say and something good happens to them. Well, whose victory is that? Yours or theirs? And if it's yours, did you just steal it? And then let's say they fail following your advice. Well, they pay the price for that. And you can skip away merrily and say, well, I should have spoke more carefully. It's like, you don't mess about with people's destiny. You do not know where they're headed. Now, having said that, you do what you're doing in this interview, in this podcast. You ask people questions, real questions, you know, like, how are you feeling? I'm not doing so good today. Well, you know, what's up? What's going on? And you can't think, well, I'm going to ask questions to lead this person in a particular direction because that's the same game, the same instrumental game. You have to see what it is that you want to know. Because I see this when people ask me questions after my lectures, you know, now, now and then, or during a Q&A, now and then people get up and they'll ask a real question. It's part of the ongoing dialogue. Something struck them. They stand up. There's something they really want to know. It's an honest question. And that goes real well. But not infrequently, someone stands up with a little prepared speech that's packaged as a question. So I get this from Christian traditionalists fairly frequently. They get up and they ask me about my religious convictions, but really what they want to do is corner me into admitting that I should accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and, and join a particular, let's say, uh, um, denomination. It's not a question. It's just a manipulation. And so your questions, like your statements, your questions should be honest. And if you ask people questions and you really listen, they will untangle themselves. And that's partly why people love to be attended to, you know? Like, if I meet people on the street, you know, I ask them their name. They're all usually flustered when they come up to me. They don't really want to interrupt me, and then they're flustered. And the first thing I do is shake their hand and ask them their name. And I listen, you know? Not that good at remembering names, but I listen to it. And, and they know how to say their name. And so it kind of settles them down. And then it sort of marks them out as a person against the background, eh? And then if I pay attention to them and listen, they will tell me something in like 10 seconds that I need to know. Because they, they have something to say, you know? And then if you listen, people tell you what they have to say. And then you get wise because you collect all that. And so you want to help someone. Well, first of all, you would decide that you're aiming towards help, right? And, and that you do that in the spirit of ignorance. This is what every good clinician learns, is I don't know where you're headed. I don't know what's wrong with you. This is a hard problem, man. It's like, what's your problem? I don't know what your problem is. So let's find that out first, and then let's find out one thing you can ask people. This is actually useful in an argument with someone you love. They're, they're upset with you. What are your preconditions for satisfaction? Now, I wouldn't state it like that. It's like, if I could give you what you wanted right now in the context of this argument, and I wasn't doing it in a manipulative way, what is it that I would have to say or do that would, in principle, satisfy you? And that's a hard question, you know. And the person might say, well, I think you should apologize and about this. And, you know, and, I, and then I will say, what words should I use? And they'll say, well, if you loved me, you'd know. And I would say, no, I'm stupid and ignorant, and I don't know what the right words are to satisfy you. So why don't you give me a hand with that, and I'll utter them inelegantly and awkwardly in a good faith demonstration of my commitment to peace. And that won't be so good, because maybe it would have been better if I came up with it myself, but maybe next time I can do slightly better. And that works. It, it requires the person who's after you to think through the question even of whether there's anything that could be said or done that would satisfy them. And if the answer to that is no, well, probably the relationship is over. But certainly, the person that they're accusing has been put in an absolutely impossible position. But usually, almost inevitably, if the person meditates on it for a bit, there is something that would satisfy them that can be negotiated as long as they're willing to give you the opportunity to do it 
you know, stupidly and badly. So listening, man, 